So, PS4 or Xbox One? I guess we need to settle it in Smash! Hey there, Smash fans! Enjoying Mewtwo? Well, he's only the first. And ever since DLC was announced for Smash 4, there have been those who are chomping at the bit for more, those who think it's a bit excessive, and those who think that DLC in general is a mistake. But since Nintendo's going that route anyway, there's really no point in complaining. And with the fighter ballot, people are scrambling to see their character represented. So here are the 10 characters I'd like to see make the cut. But first, some rules. First, the character must be primarily from a video game so Goku and Naruto fans are out of luck. Second, the character must have appeared in at least one game on a Nintendo platform, so you can forget about Master Chief and Kratos. Third, I am not choosing characters who have been in a previous game or any of the Forbidden Seven, though in all seriousness, I would be perfectly okay with Snake returning. Finally, I am not including characters who are assist trophies or stage bosses. That means forget about Ridley and forget about Girahim. So with all that said, you asked for it, and now you're getting it. It's game time! Considering how hard Nintendo is pushing Splatoon as the Wii U's next big thing, putting the Inklings in Smash would be an excellent way to advertise the game. While I don't know all that much about the Inklings beyond what the trailers have told us, I can understand why so many people want these guys in the game. Considering we already have projectile-centric characters like Mega Man and the Mii Gunner, I really don't think that these aquatic operatives would be that out of place. Even from what little we've seen so far, the wide range of weapons that they have makes for some impressive moveset potential. The standard paint guns could be their basic attacks, their special moves could be the sub-weapons like ink bombs and rocket launchers, the super jump could easily be the third jump recovery, and for the final smash, how about we include that ink nuke? Oh yeah, no, there's some destruction for ya. Alts are a no-brainer here, just use the different colors and genders. Of course, the main reason I want to see the Inklings get in is that Splatoon is a new IP for Nintendo, and the fact is that new IPs from Nintendo haven't done so hot in recent memory. Giving the Inklings a place in the game would give Splatoon some much-needed attention. Though I will admit, the main reason they're not any higher is because the game isn't out yet as of the time I wrote this. Or maybe I'm just talking out of my ass on this one. We may as well come to terms with one fact. Ridley will never be playable in Smash 4. Now, I know people will bring up Toon Link and the Spirit Track stage, that argument is total bunk, because Alfonso can't replace Ridley. And I know Ridley's in Project M, but that's a mod. So if we want more Metroid characters, we'll have to look elsewhere. So why not give Rundus a chance? Considering all we have as far as Metroid goes is two forms of Samus, an ensemble Dark Horse like Rundus would be an ideal choice to add to the roster. Given my number one cryokinetics mastery of ice, his various ice attacks could make for a moveset that's undeniably cool. The firing of ice shards could be a standard projectile, his ice wave would make for an excellent side special, and his Iceman routine would prove to be an effective recovery. As for his final smash, he could easily go into hyper mode, which could buff up all his attacks and give him access to that big-ass ice flail. Considering that the ice climbers missed the cut, the roster seems to be lacking a genuine ice user, and since NetherRealm Studios pretty much has no interest in campaigning to get Sub-Zero in the game, not to mention the Jack of the Age rating, Rondis is the more appropriate choice in this case. And hey, it could also be a good way to judge gamer interest in the Metroid series, which is especially important when you consider the fact that Metroid is approaching its 30th anniversary, and Nintendo needs to help the series recover from other plot hole. And while I'm on that tangent, what exactly did that game do that the Prime series had to be retconned? If there's one thing that needs to expand in the roster, it's the number of DK characters. DK and Diddy aren't enough. Another thing that needs to expand is the cast of villains. Bowser, Bowser Jr., Ganondorf, and DDD aren't enough. Who fits both of these criteria? King K. Rule. Having antagonized the Kongs for years, K. Rule is a great choice for the roster, mainly for the kind of personality he could bring to the battle. He's basically had four different fighting styles. His Kremlin King style from the original has him using his crown as a projectile and throwing his weight around. 
His pirate getup from DKC2 gave him a big-ass blunderbuss, which, again, gives him a lot of projectile options and a potential side B. His mad scientist scheme from DKC3 gives him a potential recovery move in the form of that weird... helicopter... pack... thing. Not much else from that form, considering all he has there is traps, which admittedly might make a good down B. And from his battle in DK64, his boxer set pretty much speaks for itself. It's the kind of character that K. Rule would be in Smash in the first place. He'd be firmly entrenched in the heavyweight class, being a heavy hitter with great attacking power and knockback, with poor speed to compensate. Oh, and for his final Smash, he could easily unleash the giant form that he used in DK Jungle Climber. Heck, we could even give K. Rule his own stage aboard his styling ship! This Killer Croc has a lot of potential as a character in Smash, but I'd also like to see him get a spot so we could reenact this gem from the CGI cartoon. Diddy for the coconut, the coconut for Diddy! Don't do it, don't do it, he's blocked the eye hole! I guarantee you to see the no pity for Diddy! Man, that cartoon was so cheesy. With Nintendo's growing indie library and the announcement of the fighter ballot, developers are scrambling to get their characters in the game. The amount of hashtag campaigns regarding this ballot is absolutely DDD-sgusting. Seriously? Meat Boy? He hasn't even been on a Nintendo platform yet! But as long as the push for indie characters is in full force, I'd say that fans of everyone's favorite half-genie hero deserve to have their wish granted. WayForward has been clamoring to get Shantae into the game, and to be honest, I think she'd feel right at home in the roster. Considering the increased number of female characters and Shantae's history with Nintendo platforms, I really see no reason not to include her. She has a wide variety of attacks spanning the three games she's done so far, so she should have no trouble forming a solid moveset. For one, she could briefly tap into her transformation powers to deliver attacks. Her magic items could also be used effectively in her moveset, if mostly for the purposes of projectiles. Lastly, she used Risky's Pirate Tools and Pirate's Curse, so I could see those working into her moveset too. I'm not quite sure what Shantae could do for her final smash, but considering what Nintendo has done for other characters, I'm sure they could think of something. And let's be honest. Seeing her use her hair in her basic attacks would be obvious. But if they do put her in, they have to give her a stage in Scuttletown, and they have to use We Love Burning Town as one of her themes. Shantae is one of the torchbearers for Nintendo's indie love, so to put her in the game would make a lot of sense. Now let's move on before someone makes a reference about her hair next entry quest! Ever since the rumors started about Street Fighter's Ryu possibly joining the roster, it opened up the floodgates for speculation. Granted, when I wrote this, these rumors were neither confirmed nor debunked, but if these rumors are true, it means that Capcom would have two characters on the roster, meaning at this point, almost anything goes. So where does that leave the co-developers, Namco Bandai? Obviously, they'd want to add a second character as well. The Tales series would be a perfect series to represent, and in all honesty, Lloyd Irving's arguably the most logical choice. For starters, a lot of fans of the Tales series started with Symphonia on the GameCube, and Lloyd is one of the most popular characters in the series. This guy has a lot of moves at his disposal from his native game, and they could easily be worked into his moveset. Demon Fang, Tiger Blade, Sonic Thrust, Grave Blade, and that's just to name a few. Hell, he even uses these arts in Smash Flash 2, so there's no reason that Nintendo can't pull it off too. In fact, the Tail series has a very similar combat system to Smash Brothers. I'm dead serious here. Basic combos are mapped to the A button, while arts are mapped to the B button with various directional inputs. The similarities make too much sense. Also, his Mystic Art would be a perfect Final Smash for him. When you take into account that Lloyd has taken on angels, demons, and all sorts of crap, Lloyd would make a much better choice than characters like Klonoa and Kazuya. And before you complain about another fucking sword user, let me remind you, Lloyd doesn't use a sword. He uses two swords. That makes him twice as effective. That's not how it works, you dingus. Way to ruin the joke, dingus! Sometimes I feel like the only person alive who remembers Star Tropics. It's a serious cult classic that I loved playing through, and I think it deserves some love. Sadly, its representation in Smash Brothers is 100% non-existent, and I find that to be just sad. It's as much a part of Nintendo's history as any other NES classic. So how do we raise awareness for such a sadly neglected game? Why put the main hero in Smash Brothers, of course? Mike Jones is a rare example of a Nintendo character specifically designed for Western audiences. As such, he may be the twist character that the DLC roster needs. His weapon of choice is a yo-yo, kind of like Ness, but if he has enough health in his native games, his main weapon becomes more powerful. Mike also has access to a wide variety of gadgets like snowman dolls, shurikens, laser blasters, baseballs, and bolos. Combine these two factors together and you've got some incredible moveset potential. 
Take, for instance, his Psychic Shockwave from the second game as a standard special. It could be very powerful to start, but as he takes damage, the power of the Shockwave would decrease. His various tools could also factor into his movesets, such as his bolus being used to trip up opponents as a side B. But there's two big reasons I want Mike to get in. One, he was rumored to be on the drawing board for Brawl, but was rejected due to not being introduced to Japan. I'm pretty sure this was fake, not to mention it wouldn't make any sense due to the presence of Fire Emblem characters in Melee, but it's still an interesting read. Which leads me to my second reason. If Mike were to get into Smash, he would get some much-needed attention. And with any luck, he could finally get a new game after all these years! Hey, it worked for Pity Pat! Whoever made that fake Rayman leak definitely deserves some props. I mean, this guy had a lot of people thinking. And yeah, Rayman is a popular character, and Rayman Legends was originally slated to be a Wii U exclusive. So yeah, I see no reason why we shouldn't include Ray Mark III. <laughs> but all joking aside, why shouldn't a custom robo like the Ray Mark III have a place in Smash? Considering that custom moves are a part of the game, and custom robo is all about, well, customization, Ray would make an excellent addition to the roster. To explain how well he'd fit in, here's a brief description of how robos work. Each robo consists of a frame equipped with four parts. Guns, bombs, pods, and legs. So here's how I think it would work. Guns would be standard B, bombs would be side B, pods would be down B, up B would be a rising dash with the leg part, and for the final smash, Ray could tap into its full power using the soul boost from Arena. Using its power, it would become faster and stronger for a limited time, but have a lag once it wears off, so it would need to be used wisely. Also, if Raymark 3 were to make it, they would have to give him custom moves. Which they should have done with Mewtwo to begin with, but I digress. While they're at it, they should give us a Holoseum stage and custom Robo Battle music. When you consider that the Raymark 3 Assist trophy was dropped from Smash 4 altogether, custom Robo needs some fresh attention, and the Raymark 3 would provide just that. Because let's face it, everything's better with robots. Even if it's, well, 10 inches tall. Size doesn't matter in Smash, okay? With the history that Mega Man has had with Nintendo, I certainly haven't forgotten that Castlevania has just as strong a connection. Hell, several of the series' best games are on Nintendo platforms. So given that fact, if a Castlevania character gets into Smash, there's only one option as to who it's gonna be. HA! <laughs> I wish! As much as I love Soma, the point remains that if a Castlevania character does make the cut, it's 99% certain to be Simon. Simon is the OG, and as bland as he is personality-wise, in terms of combat, he'd fit right in. For one thing, he'd be the first dedicated whip user on the roster, meaning he would have a unique fighting style right off the bat. And it's not like he can't hold his own in a fighting game, I mean, judgment is a thing after all. In terms of his specials, he's got his sub-weapons. Daggers, crosses, holy water... That stuff would make for some excellent moves that he could use. Not to mention, his whip is an excellent tool for grabs and for recoveries, and his hyper attack from Judgment could easily be his final smash. Or he could take a cue from his descendant Richter and break out an item crash. In fact, we could even use the various Belmonts as alts. Trevor, Christopher, Joost, Leon, Richter, Julius. Also, Dracula's Castle would make for an awesome stage, and with so many kick-ass themes to choose from throughout the series, Nintendo would have no problem selecting a soundtrack. Considering Nintendo's history with Castlevania, putting Simon in Smash would make a lot of sense. But probably the biggest reason to include Simon is so that we could finally have the Captain N reunion we've been waiting for all these years. You know you want it, people, don't deny it! Hey, I never said Shantai was the only indie character I wanted to see get in. Considering how much I love Shovel Knight, hell, it was my favorite game of 2014. And considering the incredible amount of support our Man of the Earth has been getting, his viability in Smash has no question whatsoever, which is basically my way of saying I want Shovel Knight to get in! The following that this indie superstar has gained is downright legendary, and he definitely has the potential to be an amazing character in Smash. For one thing, his fighting style is unlike any other character. Yeah, Villager has a shovel, but does he use it in his basic attacks? I thought not. The various ways in which it could be used makes for something truly unique. As for his specials, he's got all those relics that he gathered in his journey to prominence. The Chaos Sphere has boundless potential as a projectile. His side B could go to the Dust Knuckles because, unlike Sonic, this guy doesn't chuckle. I rather flex my muscles. The Propeller Dagger could serve as an aerial recovery whose flight path could be modified. The Warhorn would make a nasty down B with a powerful AoE effect. As for the final smash, how about we call him the Knights of the Order of No Quarter? Ooh, ooh. Or maybe something similar to Black Knight's ultimate form! The possibilities are incredible! Also, with all the amazing chiptune themes, Shovel Knight would need a stage befitting his greatness. 
With all the indie love going around, Shovel Knight is the prime contender among them, and if an indie character somehow gets in, it's most likely going to be Shovel Knight, though it will be kind of an adjustment seeing him in 3D. Still certainly a lot better than some of the other choices we have. Commander Video? Really? A trophy and music are not enough! Okay, I get that he's not the most well-known character out there. I get that he's a long shot among long shots. But to be perfectly blunt, I don't care. Wonder Red is the hero that Smash deserves. No, he's the hero that Smash needs. The Wonderful 101, being one of my favorite games on the system, believe me, I've covered that already, deserves the attention that Smash can provide, and putting the leader of the team in the game is the best way to do that. To tell you the truth, considering he's led his team of 100 heroes against near-impossible odds to save the planet from the greatest alien threat it's ever seen, I see no reason, no reason whatsoever, that Red couldn't hold his own against Smash's best, let alone dominate. For one thing, his fighting style seems tailor-made for Smash. His smash attacks could utilize his Unite Hand for some extra punch, and the Unite Hand could even factor into his specials. In Wonderful 101, Red gains special techniques as he levels up which would work as specials, including Wonderful Stinger, Wonderful Rising, and Wonderful Cyclone. He could even throw a fireball that rivals Mario as a standard B, and I could just imagine those hilariously stereotypical hero quotes of his that could be used as taunts. We will use force! And to top it off, I have the perfect idea for his final smash. Bring in the rest of the team, and unleash all seven Unite Morphs one by one, just like in the closing moments of the final battle, with Red himself delivering the final Coupe de Grace. Also, give him a stage in Blossom City with Table's Turn as one of the songs, with Sentinel's Codex for good measure. To be honest, if I could vote ten times, I'd vote for every character on this list because they deserve a spot. But I feel that Wonder Red needs it. If you agree with me, well, you've got until October to cast your vote, so get out there and prove that diplomacy can succeed. We can do it! We can do it! I'm the quarter guy, and if I hear one more goddamn vote for Shrek, I swear to God, I'm gonna be very upset that people can't understand the simple rules of the ballot. <laughs>